Alright, what's up guys? So, we haven't done a coaching video in a little bit, so we're going to do another coaching video with a uh, Platinum Widowmaker, I believe. Um, they said they used to be high plat, but they've kind of lost their skill. So, alright, well, let's uh, hop right into it see Everyone what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so... Right out the bat, kind of like the Mercy Baptiste. The Mercy theoretically should be kind of... Oh, Mercy Zen. Alright, so Mercy should be kind of healing the team. Alright, so I thought originally you were going to get a Mercy Pocket. That's not going to be the case. Because your Mercy's going to have to heal team, but that's fine. Um, so, Temple of Anubis attack is kind of iffy, right? For Widowmaker. Because basically... <clears throat> With Widow, you never really want to be playing in a contested choke, right? Because if, especially when there's like enemy snipers or whatever. Honestly, just typically, if it's a contested choke, um, you typically don't want to be playing there because you don't want focus fire on you. Because if people focus you, you can be bursted down very quickly as Widowmaker, especially because when you're scoped in, your movement is very restricted. You can't move a lot. You move pretty slowly. You have a very predictable head height and everything, so it's just really easy to burst you down if you're sitting in choke, right? So that basically leaves you with um, one to two options. So you can wait till your team goes all the way through here, right? And you can then push through choke while the enemy team that is theoretically sitting right here, right, is being pressured over here by your team. Um, or you can just hook up here and start taking shots. That's typically, I would typically wait a little bit. However, there is a trade-off because it's either you hook up here and you take some pressure, um, but then you maybe get a pick and get out. This requires you to have good aim, of course. You got to be able to hit your shots, but you know, you hook up here, you get a pick, you get out, um, or you go down and... Uh, and you get pressured a little bit up here, right? Or you wait till your team goes through, and then you push through here where you're not pressured. You go through, and then you can either, like, stop right here, start to try and take a shot from low ground, or you can cycle up even further, rotate back here. Theoretically, there, there's usually nobody here. Sometimes there is, and you have to adjust for that sometimes. But theoretically, the entire team's pushed up here, especially in lower elos like Platinum. So then you sit back here, right, and you just take pot shots. Um, however, there's there's trade-offs to both. So if you're here, you're being pressured by team, right? And if you are being pressured by the enemy team, if you wait for your team to push in, then you're losing effective time um, that you could be using to get your actions per minute up and just get your overall impact in the team fight up. Your team has to do the majority of the work before you can get positioned. So, you know, it's just there's trade-offs for both both strategies um typically i don't like to run widow on temple of anubis but it's fine for attack i mean <coughs> but it can be fine you know we'll see all right you missed the hook shot so hook shot right here is kind of pointless right because we're investing hook which has a 10 second cooldown right or wait 10 or 12 i believe it's 10 no 12 okay so we're investing a 12 second cooldown right like it's gonna take 12 seconds for us to get hook hook back just for a little hook shot like this and we're not really going anywhere like we're not this isn't gonna get us a shot we can barely see sigma and lucio positioned right here we're not gonna get a pick off of this or our chance of getting one is very low. We should have pushed up with team up this right side, right? I don't know why our Ryan's in the back and our Reaper's in the front, but whatever. Anti-Nade's probably going to go come through. This is kind of a mess. But we should have gone in with team and then, you know, done either A or B of what I talked about before. But this is... Pointless. Okay, we miss... That's bad shield placement by the enemy Sigma. We should have gotten that Lucio, but it's whatever. <clears throat> nice shot. So right here, we're kind of just taking pot shots. Like, this is good. There's no reason to hook up here. Alright. There's no reason to hook up here. So, let's go back just like a little bit. So 
So when we're down here, right, <clears throat> and we're taking pot shots, right, we're taking pot shots onto the Zarya and all this stuff, like, this Sigma is not shielding his team at all, right? So there's really no re- wait, is that a Reinhardt? Why is our Reinhardt shield red? Okay, whatever. Um, anyways, Sigma's up here, right? Sigma is not shielding his team at all. Like, we shouldn't- there's no reason to hook up. You only hook up if, like, you cannot hit the team otherwise. Right now, we're not being pressured. <clears throat> I mean, look at us. The Zarya's shooting at team. Like, that- nobody's really pressuring us, right? So- we can just sit here, keep on taking pot shots. That Zarya, you hit her with a headshot, she's low. We could have finished. But, like, right here, we're just sitting here taking pot shots. Like, that's all we really need to do until team pushes in. Um, there's no reason to hook up here, because now what you're going to see is Dink. Dink on the Zarya. We could have finished that. But then we hook up, and now the Sigma's going to shield his... Well, not even really shield his team, but, you know. Now you're pressured. See? And then you're forced to back out, and now team sees you. You have to take Mega. Everybody's kind of split. You're a man down, right? We could have stayed in the back, just kept on taking pot shots until they use shield. And then we hook up, get another free shot. Because, right? So when you're back here, the way Sigma blocks his team is he has to set up a shield here, or he has to push a shield out to you, right? When he does either, his team's still exposed if you do a hook shot up here. So what you do is you make him shield his team like you take pot shots until he shields his team you hook up get another shot and then you could maybe even have an opening pick off of that like you get a dink here you hook up get another dink that person's dead right we could have killed like zarya or something like that but right now we're kind of doing nothing <clears throat> okay sitting in the side yep this is good this is good it's fine until we need it all right so we need to take more shots so like our shots don't need to be lined up perfectly, right? Um, like, our, our aim needs a bit of work. Um, but, and I recommend just, just Google any aim trainer to get your aim better. Um, but anyways, th there's like bunches of them on Google and all that stuff. But uh, right now, we need to get our APM up, or actions per minute, right? <clears throat> so right now... We're kind of sitting here. We're taking forever to line up shots. Like, you can sh shoot shots quicker. Don't take forever to line a shot up. Because especially if you're missing more shots than you're hitting, you're going to want to take more shots. Because then, you know, <clears throat> it's just a higher chance. Like, let's say you miss one out of every five shots, but you're shooting, like, you know, full... You're shooting a lot faster than other Widows, right? Um, wait, no, that's not a bad ratio. That's a battery shirt. Never mind. All right, just ignore my example. But basically what you're doing right now is, right, your aim, it's not perfect. You're not consistently, like, focusing down and hitting people. <clears throat> so, like, we need to, um, you know, just, just shoot more, honestly. Like, you don't need to take forever to line it up because especially if you know you can't, like, guarantee the shots on the people, then we should be taking more shots faster because it increases... Um, the likelihood that one of our shots will hit, you know, because we're shooting more. Um, if your shot's fully charged and you're on something, then try and hit it. Don't take forever to try and line up that perfect shot. Um, also stop jumping in between targets because you see here you're on Ana, you were just aiming at Genji and then you were aiming at Zarya prior. Like we're, we keep on dinking different targets, but never focusing them down and hitting them, right? <clears throat> So first of all, we want to go for squishies. If no squishies are available, then yeah, we go for Zarya and tanks and stuff like that. But we should be going for the 200 HP targets, the targets that you can one-shot with a headshot first. Um, because it's just going to make our life a whole lot easier. And we need to stop bouncing in between targets because then we'll never kill anything. Unless we're hitting everything with a headshot. And if we're not hitting everything with a headshot, then basically what's happening is you're just body shotting or dinking everything not fully charged. Everything lives. You're doing damage, yeah, you'll charge your ult, yeah, fast. But, like, you're not doing your job as Widowmaker, which is to get opening picks in a teamfight. <clears throat> Hawks, so, excuse my, um... They're clearing and stuff, but... Alright. Yeah, so right here we're not really hitting anything. We hook up, uh... Like, we're not really looking to get any impact, right? Kill the Sash.
<clears throat> also, I think you're slowing down. Oh, that was a very nice track on the Lucio. Um, however, the problem here is, like, you know, your team's won fight, right? Congratulations. But problem is, you have not really contributed to this fight. Yeah, you just killed Lucio. You've put a little bit of pressure to force positioning. But, like, other than that, you haven't really done anything. You haven't gotten your opening pick. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lucio pick was after um, Genji was already dead. Like, this is basically cleanup at this point. So we haven't actually done our job yet to initiate fight, which is to get that opening pick to make our team... Make it um, so that our team can have an easier uh, time... Um, cleaning up right you're not really Widowmaker's not clean up like yeah you should be clean helping clean up with the team but like it's it's your job to get that initial pick like <clears throat> so in the high ranks right in the higher ranks your job as widow kind of shifts it's to force you like you have to play a lot more aggressively and stuff and you have to play to force either the tanks to zone you or like change their shield positioning um so that people get exposed because people in the higher ranks are not going to automatically just expose themselves and jump out from shield, right? Because shields are managed better and people don't jump out from their main tanks to get dinked by you. But in the lower ranks, people are going to jump out from their shields and they're going to come out and fight you, right? Like that Ash, um, just a second ago, right? She peeked out and she tried to 1v1 you. A Widow should beat out an Ash of equal skill every time because she you can one-shot headshot her. She cannot. So you should beat her every time. Um, right? So we just basically, especially in Platinum, right? Uh, all you need to do is wait for somebody to peek. Just wait for somebody to peek a shield, and then you dink them, right? Your aim needs to be good enough so that you can dink them, but, like, you just need to be able to zone people and kill people that uh, have bad positioning and uh, just punish mistakes. That's really all you do, right? But right now we're not really positioning to punish mistakes or get value, so... Let me mute my phone. <clears throat> All right, we're hooking up. Nice shots on Ash. That was good. Your shots on Lucio and Ash were clean. <clears throat> oh, please don't get slapped. All right, so right here, right, we're kind of just shooting down lane. We're not necessarily focusing. It's so like there, right? You shot at Ana, right? You got Ana low. Ana was still in your sight lines. We could have finished Ana. But then you changed your target priorities to Sigma, and you started shooting Sigma. Like, we could have finished on it. Like, you need to focus one target at a time and not jump around so much. All right, this is a really good positioning on the right side. Her position. And we got bursted. That's unlucky. <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, you probably should have waited, right? Um, wait till your team pressures a little bit, because right here... It is rather exposed. Your team isn't there. You got rezzed. So this time, I think you are jumping down. I don't really... Oh, your team hasn't pushed in. I thought this was... T Wait. Oh, this is your team. Okay, they just have a bunch of flankers. So, the problem with this position up here, right? And I didn't notice where your team was. Um, so your team needs to be pressuring first for this to get value. Because you... Basically, when your team pushes down this main choke, right? And... It forces the team to back up to point, and it sheep herds them basically to wherever your team chooses, right? And then up here, you just dink people that are in that sheep herd. You just focus and dink, right? But our team hadn't pushed in yet, so you were basically just up there like, hi, kill me, um, right? So you need team pressure when you take those positions. But <clears throat> Here's an okay position. It's not the best. But it works. <clears throat> Alright, this is nice. We need to back out. We need to back out. Just back out. Back out. Team fight's lost. Okay, we're still getting things. We should have backed out, but I mean... Still getting kills. Alright, so like, you, you got kills there, right? I mean, you maintained your positioning well, it's just the only problem. I mean, they don't... 
it's okay to an extent because they don't have high pick potential and only one person was diving you at a time. Had more people dived, you should have backed out, but that was fine. It's just um, you always have to be careful because, right, when you're there, um, your uh, the risk is higher than the reward, right? Because if you pick somebody, they're going to be back in like 10 seconds because their spawn is literally right there. Um, whereas if you die, it's going to take like 30 seconds for you to get back to your team. So, you know, the risk is way higher than the reward, but this is fine. Um, yeeting a Venom Mine, there's really no reason to. We should have saved Venom Mine for Lucio. <clears throat> Alright, so what did I say about playing a choke? Um, so playing a choke right here, right? We're just shooting the shield. There's no reason to be here. We're just shooting shield. We're really not getting anything accomplished. What we should have done is gone down this side or gone down left side, which left side's really iffy because it's for one contested right now for two. There's a junk rat that can just burst us when we go in hallways. Um, so we should be trying to take this right side, trying to take this high ground. We could take this little plate here when our team pushes in to uh, final choke. Um, we could hook up here, right? But like... We should be using high ground. Playing in this choke is really pointless and really stupid because this this Sig, right? His shield blocks this entire team. Like you're not gonna get a pick here. We're just shield. We're just shooting the shield, which we could do better if we were a junk rat or a soldier. So right now we're not really getting any impact. <clears throat> we should be repositioning. All right, good reposition. Oh, unlucky. We missed the hook. That doesn't mean we go back to choke. Alright, our team's dead back out. Now we're slept. We should die here. Okay. So we should have died there, right? If that Junkrat knew his combos, um, primary fire, conk mine combo, you would have been dead, right? I mean, Mercy probably would have rezzed you, but at the same time, Junkrat could have just stayed on your dead body and then just killed Mercy if she goes for res. Um, with another conk mine primary fire combo, right? So like we should have died there like you need to like <clears throat> Right you st keep on getting picks after the team fights over which cool. Yeah Good for you, but you're not really doing your job as widow your job isn't to sit after a fights lost and then get kills It's to get an opening pick your team goes in it's 5v6. You have a very high chance of winning, right? Right now, we're kind of just doing nothing in the team fight, shooting shield. But then after the team fight, we get like two kills, but then our team's not there, so it doesn't matter. And then the the enemy team resets quicker than us, so we basically get no value other than charging in for sight, which we don't get value with during team fights. Um, also, I feel like... <laughs> Um, and I don't like to coach aim typically, right? Because like your aim is going to get better over time and you can always just basically the tip is go play an aim trainer or go play quick play, right? But, um, aim is obviously a very big part of Widowmaker and right now we're missing way too many shots because like this Ash, we should be killing Ash, right? Like there's a lot of times where we should kill people, but we don't because our aim is just not up to par. So I would recommend playing aim trainers, right? Um, uh, there's a bunch of them, just look them up, like I said earlier. Play quick play and only go for headshots, because then everybody plays all sorts of heroes in quick play, so you can learn all the head heights of all the heroes in quick play, because you need to, theoretically, you should know and have memorized all of the head heights and then just go for the head every time, right? Because that's a quicker kill than body shots, of course. Um, the only... Uh, the, the thing I'm seeing, though, with your aim is that, like, you seem to be somewhat of a high sensor, right? Like, you flick from target to target, but the problem is when you're tracking, you think that you need to, or at least this is what I am think I'm seeing. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're always either right in front of or right behind the target. You're never, like, above or below, right? So, like, you're always, like, just an inch in front or just a hair in front or just a hair behind, right? So, um, I think what you're doing is you have a high sense, right? And you know that. So you're flicking to each target and you flick onto the targets, right? But then you're slowing it down so much when you're tracking. Um, and I believe you're a console player. You look like a console player. There's no way you're PC. Um, but so if you're a console player, right? I, 
I played console too. So the right stick, right, right analog stick. Um, I think you're slowing that down and moving that so ever so slightly. You don't need to do that um, unless you have an incredibly high sense, which from looking at your gameplay, I don't think you do. Um, you just need to, you know, be mindful of that because right now what you're doing is you're flicking from target to target really well. But then, like, you're slowing the aim down so much because you think it's so high that you need to do that in order to hit things. And it's really hurting you. So I'd, I think you should, like, reanalyze, even go look back at your own games and just see, like, how you're aiming. And then try and fix that because I think that's a, also a big issue. Like, of course, just grind it out in trainers and stuff. And from your level, you're only, like, level 59. So I doubt, you know, your aim is that grinded out. And I wouldn't expect it to be. But, um... You can even go back, look at your own games, and then just see, like, oh, this is how I'm aiming. This is where I'm missing the majority of shots, right? Because Widow, like, a big part of Widowmaker is her aim. So, like, if you're missing shots and all that stuff, we need to be on that, right? And realize why and how we are missing those shots. Uh, let's see. So, we have Infrasight. We're, once again, we're shooting down sh Choke. This is still in Choke. So, while this is high ground, this is good, but this is still down Choke. And now Junkrat dives us and kills us. Um, so Junkrat, this is really easy to dive, right, as Junkrat, because you can position. So, as, as, um, basically any hero, you can hop up here, bounce to here, bounce to here, bounce to here, bounce to here, without using any abilities, right? Um, and then you can use your conk mine, one conk mine to go up, primary fire, one conk mine, right? Um, you could argue the same thing for here. But the advantage you have here is you don't know, or if you're up here, you don't know that he's coming, right? You don't really see him, especially if you're, like, off to the right side, right? That's, like, look, you can't see anything on that right side. You see those pillars, but that's it. You can't see him coming. And then he bops up and you're dead before you can react. Whereas if you're right here, look at how much you can see. Like, let's say I'm shooting down choke. I see him if he comes through there. I see him if he comes through here. I would hear him better, too. Like, this is just infinitely better. We also see more of the point. We see this ash down here. Up here. Um, let's scroll back to when you were up here. Uh... Alright. So, we're right here, right? We see... We, I mean, we can see them pretty well. If we go up here... We can see them even better, right? We see Sigma. We have them in the flank. We would totally see this drunk rat, right? And look what I told you. He conk mines up. He primary conk mine combos you, right? I had to pause the recording, and I just realized that I um, basically recorded the whole rest of the video without recording. So take two, basically. Um, <laughs> so... <clears throat> I think what I was talking about here was um basically right this junk rat he is conk mine comboing you I don't know if I went over this already if I didn't I'll do a quick overview sorry I honestly don't remember where I uh stopped so uh basically right here right you can see if the junk rat's sneaking up on you um last team fight you died because of it right so here you can see if the junk rat's sneaking up on you here you can't right especially when you come up here you only see these pillars you don't see him if he conk mines right here into your face and kills you because he can burst you down before you can even react right so like we need to be mindful of that and just play in better positions also over here there's not a big shield in your face because either sigma has a shield here and you pick people to peek it or um he rotates your shield for you and then your team just absolutely obliterates him with all the damage that they actually don't have never mind um but you know still it's if he rotates his one shield like if they rotate their one shield just for one character then that's five characters that they have unchecked on your team that can just laser the enemy team especially when they get close um which they just did right so right here we get ash yep and like I was saying earlier, I, I reiterated this, um, or I'm going to reiterate this, but we need to stop um, getting picks after a fight's already lost, right? Because that's basically what we've been doing the entire time. 
um, you just get picks. Like, you don't get an opening pick, which is Widow's job. You just net kills after the fight's lost, and then the people will reset, and it doesn't really matter. It charges your Infrasight, but so far you haven't gotten value out of Infrasight, so it isn't really amounting to anything. Um, but yeah. And like I said, I don't know if I said this already, but our aim definitely needs work, right? Like, we need to, um, do aim trainers, do quick play, like, literally anything. Just just get that aim better. And you're a low level, so I don't really expect your aim to be great, but, you know, if we want to advance in uh, ELO as Widowmaker, like, your aim has to be good. Because you need to be able to focus, uh, uh, focus on people's mistakes and punish people for their mistakes. Alright, this is good positioning. Good infrasight. Nice stink. Netiana, please. Thank you. Nice. Like, this is really good. Um. And now we're rotating back again. This is good. Like, all. Everything about this is nice. We got our two opening picks. Not just one, but two. We've rotated back. We should kill Lucio. So, there, we zoned off of Lucio too soon, right? Lucio was still in our sight lines, and then we bopped off of him before he was dead, right? We got a body shot on, and then we just took our crosshair off of him for some reason like if you're focusing focus one at a time don't just flick in between targets because it's also going to screw up your aim a lot more that lucio we could have negated his beat right because we shot him once he did a super jump so he jumped and then did the mega jump because like um when you ult as lucio and go for beats it does a jump right so if you add any jumps or any height to that it does basically a super jump and it gives you more airtime, which is always a bad thing because it means there's always more time for the enemy team to use abilities and cooldowns and all that stuff um, or kill you or just straight up shoot you. Um, so whenever a Lucio is stupid like that or whenever he jumps at all, like when, you know, um, you should be on that. Like we could have killed him there, um, but we took our crosshair off too early. We could have negated the entire ultimate. All right, we should be hitting this junk up, but. A nice dink on Lucio. This team fight's lost. We need to get out. Alright, so instead of hiding from Tyre, we should have looked to kill it. Like, it's kind of our job. Nobody else on our team can do it other than Reinhardt. Right? Unless it comes at range and just goes in a straight line, then Baptiste can get it. But other than that, it's Reinhardt and you that can get it. And primarily, it should be your job because Reinhardt has Fire Strike and that's Projectile. It can be hard to get Tyre unless it gets really close. It's like, you should be killing Tyre, not hiding from it. Ah, uh, teamfight's lost. There's no reason to fight here. There is no reason to peek this. We're just gonna get focused. And die. Yeah. There, there was literally zero reason for us to be there. And now we just cause... Okay, that's Mercy's fault, but... Yeah, there was no reason for us to be there. Like, it's... Okay, we're swapping to Doomfist. Nice. But, like, you know, teamfights... When teamfights lost, especially, like I said earlier, that position will be pressured unless your team is giving pressure as well, so... Kind of just ignoring this Junkrat. Which is fine, I guess. Alright, we used way too many abilities on that Sigma. We should have only used two. Like, overall, our cooldowns, so... Our cooldown management, right? We should never be initiating with punch. We should be getting in, using slam uppercut to get our kill, punch to punch out. Alright. No reason to punch there. It would have been better to hold punch, but you know, whatever. You hold punch until you get out of spawn door on this map. I don't know. The Doomfist is iffy. I would not have swapped the Doom when they have a Junkrat and a Sigma. Because both, both of them are stuns. Both of them could very easily disrupt your cooldown rotations and all that stuff and kind of just fuck you over, so... There's really no reason to play that. Alright. 
Alrighty, so. I think you're gonna take this high ground, but. So with Widow, there's multiple places you can play on defense. You can play here, right? Which is arguably, arguably one of the better and one of the best um, first point hold locations. Unless team is pressuring you and somebody gets up to you, then you hook over here and you can still see team. Like if the if the team pushes through here, right, then we hook up here and we can get a better vantage point. But we also have it nice here because we can see in the sides of the tanks. So it's whatever. Um, but starting out, I normally like to go for an opening pick, right? Only time you should not do this is if you know the team has a high pick potential character, right? So like Hanzo or Widow, that can dink you right out the gate. But so far, they have not played anything like that. So I go for an opening pick and then rotate back. That's just me. Um, I normally like to play here as well, starting out, and then hook up here for when team pushes in. It's just easier to net shots, but, you know, especially in the lower ranks. But, you know, where you are now is perfectly fine as well. Mm. We shouldn't be eating Venom Mine. We should be holding Venom Mine for ourselves for when we're dove. But, whatever. Mm. Alright, so hooking here is completely pointless. You want to know why? So, right now, you can see straight through here and only here. Teams typically go right side. They go left side sometimes. But typically, they're going to go right side. Meaning this position starting out. This is a place to rotate to later. But starting out, this isn't really the best location. Because you don't have LOS really on this team. Unless they peek you really stupidly. Like Zarya just did, but... Yeah, just stay here. This is good. Focus Genji. Like, we're... Problem is, we see a target... Genji was like the only target there, and you kept on taking your crosshair off of him and looking around for other things to shoot. Like, just shoot the Genji, right? There's no reason not to. Especially if he's not going to deflect you. Alright, yeah, this is good, good lo uh, location to rotate to. We're not really getting any value. Like I said, like, we need to shoot a lot more, because our APM is very low. And that's causing us to have lower impact. Like right now we're just not we're not getting enough shots off. It's taking forever to line it them line them up. Okay. Whoa. Okay, why'd we drop down at all? There's no reason to drop down there. Because we just wasted grapple hook again. Like unless you're being pressured, don't drop down. Don't drop down and then hook back up. There's literally no value to that. Unless, and like, the, the chance that there's a shield blocking the entire team and you have to hook shot. Which, even then, you can normally just hook something above you. So. There's really no reason to drop down there. Um. So, just getting pressured by this McCree. It's nice. Nice, we can finish Zar. We can finish Zar. Hook up. Alright. So, we took too long. What we should have done was, for one, the Zarya's head was still exposed, so we could have just spammed shots until we dinked her. Um, but if we go back just a split second. American. Alright, we dink her. Ana's over here healing her. She, or she's about to, I believe. Where's, where's their Ana? Yeah, she's, she's right here. So she's gonna help her soon. But what we could do... Is we could hook up right here, hook shot up, and then all we gotta do is body shatter. Easy kill. Um, but we didn't do that, so it's whatever. But like we should have hook shot it up and finished that. We got a nice dink on Zarya. Should have been a finish. Another nice dink. The problem is you're dinking Zarya, right? And there's an Ana. Ana will just keep healing her back. There's no reason to dink Zarya. Go for Ana. 
Like I said, go for squishies before you go for the tanks. If the tanks are the only thing exposed, or you really need to kill them because they're doing a lot to your team, then fine. But, like, Ana was the priority target there. She's healing the enemy team and keeping you from killing anybody. She also has sleep dart, and she'll just sleep you whenever, also lowering your impact. Um, and then she just used anti-nade, but, like, you know, when she gets anti-nade back, she could anti-nade your entire team. So... Granted, we have double shields, so she shouldn't be able to easily do it. Alright, so, don't focus a Zarya that is bubbled, and then, like, shoot her when she's bubbled. Like, if, if she's going into cover, right, and you know the bubble timing, and you know the bubble's not going to go down, then don't shoot the bubble just because. Because all you're going to do is feed her more charge, you're not going to get any damage on, especially if she's just going to go back to hiding, because she'll it'll just give her more damage. Like, it's no point. <laughs> Lucia's juking us. Nice pick on the three. Yeah. We're just really jeopardized here. But it, that's kind of unlucky. Alright. Let's see what you do. Looking back up. Right here, we're not really getting any value. We keep on changing our targets. Alright, nice. That's a good pick. Alright. That's unlucky. And we should we should have had Venom Mine on us. If we would have had Venom Mine on us, we probably could have killed that Genji. But we keep on yeeting Venom Mine, like, everywhere in random places. And it's just, it's not getting us value. Like... Yeah, see, Venom Mine's, like, so far away from you. When there's dive heroes like Genji and Lucio, there's no reason. This uh, McCree's positioning for a Deadeye. We should kill him. No one can hide from my there's sight. no reason to pop in for sight here, but... Okay. Playing, like... We're not getting any value. We need a position to get value out of this infosite. There we go. Overall, though, that was only one pick. Like, uh, Infrasight was not necessary there. You want to use Infrasight when you see the team pushing. Because then you can lock them down. Because, like, if then if they peek shields or then if they peek a corner, you can nag a kill, right? Or snag a kill. Like, only use it when the team's pushing as a defensive widow. Like, when you're a defensive widow, basically what you want to do with Infrasight is use it when the enemy team's pushing or use it when the enemy team's widow, which they don't have right now. Um, if the enemy team has a Widow and they pop in for sight, you automatically pop in for sight to counter. Um, but other than that, you just use it when they're pushing. Which, right now, we we didn't really do that. We did that when we saw one McCree and then it ended up getting us one kill. So, I mean, it stopped the enemy team from pushing, but, like, we could have gotten a lot more value. It wasn't really necessary. It's a nice dink on Ana. Nice kill on Lucio. Like, these are good kills here. It's a good hook back. Like, right now, we're, we're doing our job, right? I mean, getting a pick here and there, and we're keeping the team from... Keeping the enemy team from being able to push, which is really all you need to do. So. As long as they're not getting a full push, then you're fine. Or pushing at all, honestly. If you can negate a push every team fight is that's great. Alright, dropping down here, there was no reason to drop down there. That McCree should have killed us. He fanned the hammer, so he didn't. Should have fanned Dink Dink, and then we should have died. Um I don't know why we dropped down for Mega. We were full HP. We did not need to drop under bridge. There's no LOS down there. Um McCree shouldn't have really been down there either. Now we see he has his dead eye, and we know he has his dead eye. He hasn't popped it. Like, it's not rocket science. He, he for sure has it. He's gonna go for an ult here. But 
there's no reason for us to be down there. I mean, it's unlucky that he's down there, but like at the same time, we didn't need to drop down. So, and he's probably gonna go for a dead eye unless you kill him. All right, nice. And all checking. So like, right in the spectator, we obviously see who has ults and everything, but ult tracking's not a crazy hard concept. I think they win the game here, but. Basically, um, oh, you got slept. Unlucky. So with ult tracking, right, you're, what you're doing right now, um, like, it, ult tracking wasn't really necessary here, right? But, like, if you can just keep in track, like, what, or keep in your head, like, what do the, what ults do the enemy team have? What ults did they use last team fight? Who has used ult the entire match? Like, if a hero hasn't used ult the entire match, it's been, like, two to three minutes, right? Then they most likely have ult. General rule of thumb, two minutes. A player has ult unless they're doing more work than average which usually turns it into more like a minute minute and a half so you know we should be anticipating that but. all right but um it, it wasn't a big deal it's just something i thought to touch on so right now basically your main issues with widow is one your aim needs to be improved because you have random spurs of like you'll get two or th like two picks right and that's great but overall, our impact on Widow isn't, it's not that great, right? Because right now what we're doing wrong um, is for one, our aim needs improving, right? That That's just your Widowmaker player, Widow is very aim intensive, right? But then also your positioning. So the aim that you have, you're not getting maximum value out of because your positioning is very, um, it's very inconsistent, right? Like, you'll position really well sometimes, and then you'll position really bad sometimes. We also don't pull out when fights are lost. I mean, we haven't died yet. Well, actually, no, we died once because of it. But it's still, the risk is higher than the reward, especially on attack. Like, if a fight's lost, back out, because, yeah, you might get a kill or two, but it honestly doesn't matter. Because, like, the most you're going to do is charge your ult. And most of the times, you, when you were doing that, you basically already had your ult. And, you know, the enemy team, they would just respawn by the time your team was back to push. So, it's really pointless and there's no reason to it. Um, and also, if you're full charged and you're not insta-killing people, then what you're doing is you're feeding the enemy supports ult charge. That's also another thing. I don't think I've actually talk talked about this in any episodes. It's primarily for DPS, but honestly for everybody. If you have your ult, there's also, like, there's no reason to farm ult charge, right? Like, to play... Like, let's say I'm Reinhardt, right? I have Shatter. And I'm not playing for kills. I'm just playing aggressive. I'm throwing fire strikes in that aren't gonna kill anybody. Nobody's following up. It's just I'm throwing them to get more damage. There's no reason to do that whatsoever. Because what am I gonna do? I'm gonna hurt the enemy team, yeah. But, like, that doesn't matter if nobody's following up and I have my ult. Because there's nothing to gain from it, right? But the enemy team has everything to gain from it because the supports heal the team up and then the supports get their ults faster. So if you have your ultimate and you're not going for kills, you're just going for damage for no reason, they're like, stop. Because you're going to feed ult charge to the enemy team's supports and then they're going to get their ults way faster. Um, so that's that's just a tip. I don't think I've ever gone over it before. Um, but yeah, like that's kind of what you're doing right now. You're just feeding the enemy team supports. Sometimes you get picks... Um, especially when the enemy team was really stupid and pushed you, like, the Lucio went all red at Lucio mode one time and just charged straight for you and you killed him, which was nice. Um, but also, like, your target priorities, right? We're focusing tanks more than we are, um, squishies, which we shouldn't be. We should be focusing the, focusing the squishies, they're a lot easier to kill, right? Um, we should also be focusing, um, one target at a time. We're switching between targets way too much, and it's just canceling out the value that we get on Widowmaker. Because to get value on Widow, like, you need to focus one target at a time, right? Because especially if you're getting body shots more than headshots, um, and you're not confirming kills, then, you know, you need to stay on it even more. Because it's not like you can dink flick, dink flick, dink flick, uh, you know, unless your aim's that good. Um, right now we're kind of doing, like, you know, body shot, and then we're flicking off to another target body shot, flicking back. That target's full HP by the time we flicked back, and we're not guaranteeing or we're not securing kills there's a lot of times where we could have secured kills on people but then we flicked off of them too early um yeah so just focus on um getting your aim up for one for two just having positioning that is um 
it makes it easier to punish bad uh, positioning and mistakes from the enemy team, and while also keeping you safe. Uh, and then focus on like your target priorities, and focus on not flicking between targets, right? And I think you'll do a lot better. Oh, also, little tip. Um, you're using uh, Venom Mine like really uh, aggressively, and you're just like yeeting it across the map to get like extra damage. It doesn't do that much damage. It's not worth it. Just put the Venom Mine like right at your feet or somewhere near you or in a flank like right next to you um, so that you can stop like, for example, a Genshi from diving you. But like, there's no reason to yeet it across the map because it's not going to get value. But yeah. Alright, so um, I hope anybody watching uh, learned something. Uh, and everybody have a great day. Peace.